Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope this video and the podcast does find you well. I'm Samuel Adams, and welcome to the episode of Cavanade for April the 3rd. I hope you got it. Let's just start all of that over. That was the, the mic stuff is just really bad right now. Oh, man. Yeah, we're just going to back it up. We're going to back it up real quick. We're going to back it up real quick. Starting in three, two, one. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the episode of Caffeinate for April the 3rd. It is a Tuesday, my guys, and I hope that you are doing absolutely fantastic. My name is Samuel Adams, and we are going to be digging into the hottest gaming news of yesterday and early this morning because we have some pretty good stories to cover, I would say. Uh, you know, it's not going to be the most jammed pack episode of today. Uh, but let me let me back up and talk about what's going on. Razum in the chat, greetings, good morning, how are you? I'm doing okay. Uh, I'm having some tech issues, you know, on the back end. I think that my headphones, you know, last night if you were watching the stream, I actually had some, uh, you know, audio issues and things along those lines. Uh, so I've ordered a brand new pair of headphones to come in today and uh, fix some of those issues. But, you know, we got the earbuds in, we're doing okay, I can hear myself. I know how loud I am, uh, which is always a good thing. But uh, for those of you who may not know what's going on, uh, I am Samuel Adams. I talk about gaming news here on twitch.tv slash the Samuel Adams every single morning at 7 a.m. I do stuff on YouTube. I do stuff on Twitter. I do stuff on Anchor. It is a lot of content that I do make. So if you want to check out what I've got going on, then by all means, give something a look. You can always follow me on twitter.com slash pretty chill guy to keep up to date with everything that I do make throughout the week. Uh, but with that being said, let's go ahead and dive into some news, shall we? Be because we have some pretty big stuff going down. Uh, first off, yesterday YouTube was down for a considerable amount of time. This story comes to us from CNET uh, via Richard Nieva. I believe is how you say that. Maybe, maybe Nieva? perhaps a uh, YouTube channel page is down for several hours on Monday. You could still watch videos, but couldn't get to them by clicking on channel links. Uh, so essentially what was going on is that you could still go and watch videos. But if you wanted to go to say my channel, if you want to go to say somebody else's channel, uh, you literally couldn't do that which was a huge pain for myself and for a lot of other people. In fact, it just made me go over and watch some Twitch streams instead. Uh, but with that being said, let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, if you were getting an error message while searching for YouTube videos through channel pages on Monday, you were not alone. The world's largest online video site, which is owned by Google, confirmed that channel pages went down for about three hours. To be clear, you could still watch videos on the site. You just couldn't find them by clicking on channel pages. A YouTube spokeswoman said the pages went down starting around noon PT. Uh, they started to reappear around 3 p.m. Pacific time, which I would say is generally about right. Uh, I think that I probably had some issues into the 7 o'clock hour as I was in class and checking out YouTube stuff. Uh, but with that being said, you know, we'll go ahead and move on from that. This is essentially the image that you were getting. Uh, you were just seeing this, which is so frustrating because I get what they're trying to do here. They're trying to kind of alleviate the stress of a situation. But for those audio listeners, it's literally a monkey holding a wrench, uh, looking at a big line of letters and numbers of various capitalizations and lowercase. It's just it's a pain in the ass, really. It just looks terrible. Uh, but with that being said, you had a 500 error message. Technical difficulties on websites aren't uncommon, but for a site as large as YouTube, uh, with more than a billion visitors a month, the snafu could have created headaches for its web of viewers, creators, and advertisers, and it did. Uh, some people encountered errors when accessing channel pages on YouTube. Today, a spokeswoman said in a statement, uh, We worked quickly to address the issue and fix the problem. We're sorry for any inconvenience this caused. Uh, for me, this was something more of a... It was an inconvenience, but it wasn't something that was very, very detrimental. You know, I wasn't I wasn't disturbed or distraught by any means. Uh, Razum in the chat says, I didn't notice anything. I don't really watch YouTube enough anymore to actually notice when something like this goes down, to be honest with you. Uh, I watch YouTube probably about maybe an hour a week now. I don't know. It used to be so much more. But since the advent of live entertainment it just doesn't have that same kind of appeal now i do stick around and i watch the people that i've watched for years i do stick around and i watch the people that i am passionate about and of course i still upload a lot of content over on the platform day to day uh, but with that being said it's not one that i really visit as soon as i wake up anymore it used to be whenever i was in high school middle school that i would get up in the morning and that would be my morning news you know i would see who uploaded what i would see uh, i was a big fan of woody's gamer tag back in the day uh, for those that don't know what that was it was essentially a call of duty channel turned into kind of like a dad advice thing over time. 
Uh, but I, I always look forward to things that were uploaded on his channel. Uh, there were so many things that I woke up to and just were was genuinely excited about. And now with YouTube, something has changed to where it just doesn't have that same kind of draw for me anymore. Uh, and so, you know, it's not something that would have really put a big, huge damper on my day. But I can understand where people would have an issue with it, especially if you are a creator who makes a living on the platform. That would be a huge drawback uh, in the long run. Uh, now, for me, as a smaller creator who uh, doesn't really monitor things that closely over on YouTube, I didn't notice anything major, though I have noticed, and I've said this on social media before, that things have been changing over on YouTube. They have definitely been uh, tweaking the algorithm because as most people are complaining about losing views, uh, I am actually doing very well on the platform, so I'm not sure what they're doing on the back end. I'm not sure if it's something I'm doing. I'm not sure if it's something that they are doing, uh, but whatever it is, it's working out in my favor, and so we'll see if there are any big changes coming after this whole big uh, you know, hold up did happen yesterday on Monday. Uh, it will be a very interesting week for YouTube creators and for the site overall, because obviously whenever you mess with somebody's livelihood, which they're messing with many, many livelihoods, uh, whenever your entire site goes down, people are going to want an explanation. They're going to want to know what exactly happened. And so I'm sure that we'll be talking about this more on caffeinate as the week does go on. But as for right now, uh, that's pretty much all the news that we have on what went down with YouTube yesterday. No real cause, no real no real statements. Uh, whatever the problem was, I suppose it's just going to be forgotten and put into the past, but it certainly is frustrating whenever your favorite site, which YouTube is uh, many people's favorite site, uh, does go down for a brief period of time, however brief that may be. Although I must say that three hours felt like a pretty long time considering that it's, you know, YouTube. That's kind of a major thing. Uh, moving on to the next story. Uh, we do have No Man's Sky launch price listed at $49.99 for the Xbox One. Now, for those that don't know uh, what's going on with No Man's Sky, uh, this is pretty much a follow-up story to one that we covered late last week, I believe, uh, where No Man's Sky is going to be coming to the Xbox One, which is very exciting in and of itself because the game, uh, although it was not received very well, is a genuinely good game. I'm one that believes that I think there is a good game uh, within the, uh, the, the, the fabric of No Man's Sky, excuse me. I think there is something to be had there that is worth having. And so whenever I heard it was coming to Xbox, whenever I heard it's getting a huge update by the name of the quote unquote next update, I was pretty pumped. You know, it's exciting to see that Hello Games is still continuing to work on No Man's Sky and is still continuing to put more and more effort into what is happening with that. Uh, now, will it turn out well? Yet to be seen. We'll see what happens. Uh, but $49.99. Uh, this story is again coming to us from Gear Nuke and uh, written by this man's name, who I'm not even going to try. You can check it out over on Gear Nuke. I apologize to that individual. Uh, no Man's Sky will be finally coming out of the Xbox One after launching as a PS4 console exclusive along with the PC. Uh, <laughs> along with PC, excuse me. This release was a surprise, however. The release of No Man's Sky has been a rather rocky one. Uh, with lack of content at launch, the release date for Xbox One version coincides with the next major update for all platforms, which is titled as Next, which is titled as Next. Weird way to say that. Uh, Amazon has now listed the price for the Xbox One version of No Man's Sky, and it's the available to pre-order uh, for $49.99. The game launched back in 2016 for the PS4, so the price doesn't seem... Uh, so the price point seems to be a little too expensive for such an old release, although it is still up to the developers to decide a price for their product. Uh, no Man's Sky has also been available in sale uh, for both the PS4 and the PC for as low as $19.99. The price point for the Xbox One version might be hard to swallow if we consider the PS4 and PC version. However, if you have waited a long time for it to come to Xbox One, you might be able to get it at no matter the price. Uh, so essentially, you know, this is just trying to butter up the fact that this game is $50 on the Xbox One. Uh, when I've seen it for as low as $20, apparently, on the PlayStation 4 and PC, I could have sworn that I saw it lower than that. I think I've seen it at somewhere around $16. Um, it is not a popular game, and it's not one that people are willing to pay a lot of money for. Uh, but for $50, that is just so excessive. When this game launched back in 2016, people were buying it left and right for $60. And that funding that came from that initial wave of people getting duped and, uh, and fooled into buying No Man's Sky, that is what has pushed the game to where it is today. And so with new updates coming out, there's obviously going to have to be more money brought into the mix to continue updating the game and to work on whatever the next Hello Games project is going to be. Uh, but the question is going to be, for a lot of people, does Hello Games deserve the funding? Do they deserve the support 
of of the the community again because they were essentially fooling people into believing uh, that they were getting a game that they simply weren't getting. It was one of those situations where you literally didn't know if if you were getting something that you were actually expecting to get, and people simply didn't get what they wanted with No Man's Sky. Uh, will that happen again with a new update? Probably not. I don't think Hello Games would make that mistake again. Uh, but with that being said, fifty dollars is too much for me just to place a uh, you know a bet that isn't sure. That's a lot of money, especially for those uh, that only have the opportunity to get a game once, maybe twice a year. You really have to kind of you know pick your shot and be sure about where you want to spend your money. I know what it's like to be in that situation. Razm in the chat says, "What looks like such an interesting game turns out to be so boring from what I've seen. It can be." Um, it's one of those games kind of like Sea of Thieves, uh, and of course this is kind of a loose correlation, but I have seen it compared online. Uh, but Sea of Thieves is a game where you really have to get into it and you have to have a community and a, a team to play with and partner up with. Uh, and in the same way, within No Man's Sky, you kind of have to use your imagination. You kind of have to just get lost in the world and not focus so much on questing. You shouldn't focus so much on, um, on you know, the experiences had that are fabricated within the game by the developers. It's more so what you make of it. And um, I can understand that with No Man's Sky. I understand where they're coming from with that. Uh, but at the same time, in the same breath, I think that this game kind of requires more than that. You know, Sea of Thieves is such a rich, lush world and, uh, and is essentially a giant sandbox. Now, No Man's Sky, on the other hand, is pretty much just mining materials, buying ships, etc. And so it's kind of a different kind of thing, but there are similarities that do cross over there. Now, with that being said, $50 for this game coming out in 2018 is a bit much, and I think that's going to deter a lot of people from actually going in and diving in and going ahead and getting the game. I think that people are going to be kind of hesitant to go back in, and I feel like this is almost uh, a bit rude in a way. Yo, Decky, thank you for that host. I appreciate that very much. Uh, but I feel like people are going to be a little bit turned off from this because it feels boisterous. It feels um, it feels like they are tone deaf to the situation that they have going on because people don't trust. Uh, people don't trust Hello Games right now. People don't believe in the product that they are bringing to the table. And so if you don't prove yourself, if you don't come through and show what you are capable of, which you have not yet, you know, I'm not going to lie. What has been brought to the table with No Man's Sky, both at launch and after launch, it has not proven uh, that I need to reinvest another $50 into what is being brought to the table. And so I don't know how well this is going to sell on the Xbox One. Now, if I am going to be, I don't know why I did this like little sassy hand motion there. Uh, if I am going to be getting um, No Man's Sky, then I'll probably be buying it very, very soon while it's still super dirt cheap. I mean, you can get a copy of this. Let's see how much this is GameStop. Let's see how much. GameStop.com. Rolling through. Uh, no Man's Sky. Okay, apparently it's Sky. No Man's Sky. Uh, right now, you can get a brand new for $19.97. I would recommend, if you want it, then go ahead and get it now. In fact, this the limited edition is $14.97. I don't understand. Is, does this include the game? Is this actually the game? I can't even tell if this is the game. Who knows, man? Who knows? Uh, but the um, but the game is twenty bucks or less right now. Uh, Decky in the chat says, "Are they for real?" After the criticism, people generally threw at them for No Man's Sky. I don't understand. You know, I don't know where they're coming from with charging upwards of fifty dollars for No Man's Sky. Uh, but obviously, right here, here's the pre-order date. It's coming out on apparently July twenty-fourth is what the date has been set at. Uh, but fifty dollars, you know, that's a bit much. That's a bit much that I don't I don't believe enough in that product to go ahead and reinvest and put that money back into that. I'm not going to lie. I'm probably not going to be in on that. Uh, Decky says, I won't be surprised with the limited edition box minus the game. People have done that before. I don't know what's going on with the limited edition of No Man's Sky, but I'm probably not going to be finding out. Moving along, this is more of a tech-related story, which I am not used to covering, so I'm not sure how well I'll be able to give insight into this as compared to how I give insight into what's going on in the gaming culture. Uh, but with that being said, Apple plans to use its own chips and Macs from 2020, replacing Intel. Uh, this is coming to us from Bloomberg Technology, and this is a major, major story. Uh, this is written by Ian King and Mark Gurman. Uh, obviously, you have the uh, the highlights here. The move will be a major blow to Intel, Apple's Mac chip supplier, and Apple is working on software platform to merge iPad and Mac apps. Uh, so essentially, those that work on iPad will work on Mac, and you've been seeing that recently in um, in advertisements where they're saying that iPad is the next computer, etc., where they're saying the uh, the value of what they have within the iPad. 
Uh, Apple Incorporated is planning to use its own chips in Mac computers beginning as early as 2020, replacing processors from Intel Corp. According to pre uh, people familiar with the plans, the initiative, codenamed Kalamata, is still in early access, or <laughs> excuse me, I'm so used to games, in early development stages, but comes as part of a larger strategy to make all of Apple's devices, including Macs, iPhones, and iPads, work more similarly and seamlessly together, said the people who asked not to be identified discussing private information. The project, with which executives have approved, will likely result in a multi step transition. Uh, the shift would be a blow to Intel, whose partnership to help re uh, revive Apple's Mac success and link the chipmaker to one of the leading brands in electronics. Apple provides Intel with about 5% of its annual revenue, according to Bloomberg Supply Chain Analysis. Uh, Intel shares dropped as much as 9.2%, the biggest intraday drop in more than two years on the news. Uh, they were down 6.4% at $48.75 at 3.30 p.m. in New York. Uh, Apple could still theoretically abandon or delay the switch. The company declined to comment. Intel said we don't comment on speculation about our customers. Uh, for Apple, the change would be a defining moment. Intel chips remain some of the only major processor components designed by others inside Apple's product portfolio. Currently, all iPhones, iPads, Apple Watches, and Apple TVs use main processors designed by Apple and based on technology from ARM Holdings. Place moving? Oh, I'm not sure what that is. Um, um, moving to its own chips inside Macs would let Apple release new models on its own timelines instead of relying on Intel's processor roadmap. We think that Apple is looking at ways to further integrate their hardware and software platforms, and they have certainly made some moves in this space trying to integrate iOS and macOS. Uh, said Shannon Cross, an, an um, analyst at Cross Research. It makes sense that they're going in this direction. If you look at incre incremental R&D spend, uh, it's, which is research and development, it's gone into ways to try and vertically integrate their components so they can add more functionality for competitive differentiation. Uh, we may check out that story in just a second. Deck, appreciate you dropping the link, bub. Uh, so, obviously, you know, you can go further into it if you would like and, and read more about it, but essentially, this would be a major blow to what Intel has going on. It is so hot in this room right now. I, I don't even want to lie. I am about to have a heat stroke. It is at least 115 degrees. Just kind of taking a step back from the news. It is incredibly toasty in here. And we're just going to loosen this up. And I'm going to undo this top button. Because we may in fact pass out and fall on the floor. And wouldn't that be a fun podcast? Oh my god. Wow. Oh. Alright. We're good. Just going to... Just going to... Just gonna back up a little bit here. Wow. All right, sweet. Um, so with Apple developing its own kind of chip, this would be a major blow to Intel because obviously that's where five percent of their yearly revenue does end up coming from. And Apple is a major supplier. I have an iPhone and an iPad sitting within five feet of me. You know, I have a lot of a lot of um, you know, skin in the game when it comes to Apple devices now. And that's not something I plan on doing. I've never been an Apple fan, uh, or at least an Apple fanboy. I've always enjoyed what Apple brings to the table because they have a really good aesthetic. Uh, but with that being said, you know, I don't know how this would turn out for Intel because 5% may not sound like a lot, but that is a big, big portion of somebody's revenue income. And so, you know, with a new development, obviously, the devices would work very, very well together. They would begin to merge, as they have been wanting to for the past couple of years, uh, iPads and Macs into one kind of experience that is going to become central to the Apple experience. I think they're trying to really uh, create their own kind of thing that differentiates it from what's going on with, with PCs, etc. And uh, and that will be a very interesting thing to see. Uh, Razum says, come to Denmark, dude. There's nice and, uh, yeah, it's nice and cold. Yeah, uh, I wish, I think it's just that I need to open up a window or something because I have spotlights and and things on and man it's very toasty um with that being said you know this is not my area of expertise will I still be buying the next iPhone yep uh, will I ever get an Apple watch nope uh moving along to VG 24 7 story from Marshall Lemon uh, Microsoft teases an Xbox backwards compatibility update. <laughs> Sam roasting himself. It's pretty hot, man. Uh, Microsoft's next episode of Inside Xbox will include the latest news on backwards compatibility. During last year's E3, Microsoft revealed backwards compatibility support for original Xbox games, and it was perhaps the best news from the entire conference. Low-key shade being thrown here by Mr. Lemon. Um, 
Sadly, we've seen little in the way of progress since then. With only 13 games supported by the service, the good news is Microsoft hasn't forgotten about backwards compatibility and will be addressing the matter on its next episode of Inside Xbox. Uh, one of our most common requests is for original Xbox backwards compatibility news, Microsoft said in an Xbox Wire news post, and we'll be starting off the show with a big update on just that. While backwards and uh, excuse me, while backwards compatibility is one of the most requested features from fans, Microsoft has faced difficulties making it a reality uh, since these games relied on original Xbox code, simply porting them to modern TVs is far more difficult than expected. Uh, coupled that with an impressive back catalog of compatible Xbox 360 games, and Xbox players have certainly felt like they are left in the gold. Thankfully, the most likely news we'll get from Microsoft is that more, more, is that more, more? Apparently, we are, we are more, more. Xbox games are being added to the backwards compatibility compatibility list. Another word that I have a lot of trouble saying. Uh, here's hoping it's something worth the wait. We'll find out on April the 10th, 2018 at 3.30 p.m. PDT or 6.30 my time, Eastern Time. Uh, Decky in the chat says, if they are including Army of Two, I'm getting an Xbox One ASAP. Uh, the value here isn't so much in what games come. It's the technology that is being developed. Let's say... Uh, that they come and they say, we have cracked the code, we have figured out exactly what we need to do, and therefore we are going to be making it happen. We are going to be bringing every Xbox game to the Xbox One over time in the same way that they have uh, with the Xbox 360. That would be very, very impressive, and especially for people that like to preserve older gaming culture. Now, of course, you can still find an Xbox relatively easily. You know, if you were to go to your local gaming store, even if you went to something like GameStop, I think they started taking retro consoles, which apparently I'm old enough to where the original Xbox is a retro console. Uh, but if you went to, X, uh, to GameStop, you could probably find an OG Xbox One. In fact, you could probably find one of the limited editions fairly easily online uh, that is still functional, though as time goes on, you know, and more and more uh, changes are made, more time passes, more of these Xboxes break or uh, or get lost or are thrown away uh, by, by parents that don't, you know, find the passion in the gaming uh, technology like their children did. Um, it's going to be harder to find games that run uh, or find Xboxes that run the games that were so influential and impactful for that generation, it will be difficult uh, to play the original Halo on the original Xbox. You see what I'm saying? And so in an effort to preserve gaming culture, I feel like it's very important for Microsoft to take an effort uh, to make these games backwards compatible because it keeps them preserved for the next generation. Uh, Rasm says, Kingdom Hearts 3 graphics, gimme gimme. Well, you're not going to be getting that from the Xbox backwards compatib compatibility program. I definitely would love uh, to go back and see this happen, but at the same time, I don't know that they'll be able to do every single Xbox game, though uh, we will find out today at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, which is when I will be in class. Uh, Decky says, sometimes I feel like my parents may be secretly happy when my PS2 broke down and my Xbox 360 got stolen. Well, you know... Mine probably would be too, because I spent a lot of time doing that kind of stuff as a kid, and I still do a lot of time doing it right now as a 21-year-old. Can't beat it, man. Can't beat it. Anyways, we'll see what's going on with the OG Xbox news tonight at 6.30, and I'll probably talk about it tomorrow morning on Caffeinate. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if it was our headliner, because who knows what's going to happen, but that's a pretty major news story. Uh, anyways, moving along, Fortnite is now open to everyone on the iOS. Uh, this is coming to us from The Verge, written by Nick Stat. Uh, Epic Games Smash Hit Battle Royale game is out of beta on mobile. Uh, Epic Games Fortnite is officially out of beta on mobile, meaning anyone with an iPhone SE 6S or later uh, running iOS 11 or an iPad Mini 4 Air 2 or later can download the game and jump into a match. Epic announced the news on Twitter feed this morning. Uh, previously, Fortnite on iOS was available in an invite-only beta period, though invites were generously given out and friends were able to invite up to three others to join the free-to-play platform. You can download the game from the App Store. Uh, it's been a whirlwind of milestone-breaking and good news for Epic since the beginning of the year, as Fortnite has experienced a metric rise in both sales, popularity, and mainstream recognition. Thanks, Drake. The game's free-to-play business model, which sustains itself purely on a mix of clever in-game costumes, items, and optional three-month subscription service, helped its best help it best its rival in Battle Royale Pioneer Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, but the game's pure fun factor combined with Epic's breakneck update cycle is what helped Fortnite remain at the forefront of online multiplayer since its debut in September of 2017. Uh, just last week, Epic added a new and improved sniper's only game mode, a ludicrous homing <laughs> missile weapon, and a number of in-game cues pointing towards the destruction of the game's Tilted Tower section, a potential game-changing event for a persistent multiplayer game. We have a uh, Darkness429 just went live on Facebook. Congratulations, Darkness. Um, 
but a potential game-changing event for a persistent multiplayer game that now has a whole community talking and swapping theories online forums. Uh, with iOS now up and everyone, it seems like Epic will only continue to add more and more players. Uh, Decky says, oh, Fortnite, that game of the year, song of the year, movie of the year, true. A Fortnite movie, could have happened? Probably. Anyways, um, so if you have, you know, an iPhone of, of any kind, shape, or form, you literally go online, you, you literally go online, and you, uh, and you download this little app right here. It's down there in the, uh, right there in the middle. Sorry about the green screen, but it's right there in the middle. And you can go online, play some of that Fortnite, that that hot Fortnite, and uh, and give it a shot, and come back and let me know what you think about the mobile port. Uh, but with that being said. Uh, the port's fine. It's crashed a couple of times on me, but with that being said, the newer the phone, then probably the better your experience will be. So, if you are digging what Fortnite is bringing to the table and you want to play it constantly, uh, then by all means, download it on your mobile device, and you can actually log in with your uh, existing account. So, essentially, if you have, you know, put in 140 hours on PC like I have, if you have, you know, put in tons of hours on PS4, Xbox One, you can log in with that account and actually start up right where you left off. So there is literally no separate progression, which is kind of weird, kind of cool. At the same time, I'm digging it. Uh, yeah, so congratulations to Epic Games on continuing their, you know, stride towards world domination. That's pretty much all I can say about that. They're just killing it out there. There is there is no game that has the same kind of impact and influence as this game does right now. Uh, absolutely mind-boggling. Just mind-boggling to think. Oh, and also they added a um, they added an in-game queue that tells people to pay attention in class uh, because people have been uh, you know playing in the middle of high school or in the middle of college. And so a professor slash high school teacher actually asked Epic to put in a disclaimer saying pay attention in class or something along those lines. And so they did, which is pretty neat. Uh, Decky says I'm waiting for old people slash children slash teen reacts to Fortnite video. I'm surprised it's not out yet, to be honest. Uh, moving along to GameSpot, uh, and this is written by Eddie McCuck, I believe is how you say that. Uh, Shout out for removing microtransactions, and here's why. Don't give me this. Listen, listen, Eddie. Eddie, bring it in, man. Don't give me this this clickbait kind of title. I don't need to. I don't want to know why. I just need to know that they're doing it. Okay. Like I love you, man. You know I respect what you do. From one gaming journalist to another. From, from one novice gaming journalist to somebody that works at GameSpot, I'm going to tell you how to do your job. No, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, Monolith is releasing a series of free updates to Lord of the Rings game this year. Uh, Middle-Earth Shadow of War is dropping its big microtransaction system. In a forum post today, developer Monolith said it is releasing a number of free updates to the game in the coming weeks and months to respond to player feedback to make the game better. And among the changes is the removal of some elements in the in-game marketplace. Uh, responding to concerns that people raised months ago before Shadow of War was even released, Monolith said it was removing all gold and war chests from the game store. Being able to outright purchase gold and gain orc followers uh, through war chest reduces the Immersions in the world and takes away from the challenge of building your personal army and your fortress, Monolith admitted. Uh, the core promise of the Nemesis system is the ability to build relationships with your personal allies and enemies in a dynamic open world, Monolith said. While purchasing orcs in the market is more immediate and provides additional player options, and you can read that by money, it, it provides more money. Um, we have come to realize that the, providing this choice risks undermining the heart of our game, the Nemesis system. It allows you to miss out on the awesome player stories you would have uh, otherwise created, and it compromises those same stories even if you don't buy anything. Currently, you can buy allotments of gold in packages of $500, $5, $1,050, $10, and $2,200 at $20. Regarding the timeline, come May 8th, you will no longer be able to buy any gold in Shadow of War. On July 17th, Monolith will permanently remove gold, war chest, and the market itself. If you have a balance of gold on July 17th, it will be converted to gold loot chest at a rate of 150 gold to gold to one gold loot chest excuse me if you have less than 150 it will be you know one gold loot chest in addition to the microtransaction changes uh, monolith is addressing the negative feedback around the shadow of war part of the game's campaign people thought it was boring they went back they're going to add more things to make it more engaging and fun and 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 beautiful and whatnot uh, yes, so you are thinking about getting Shadow of War. This is the perfect time to dive in and get it because this reinforces the idea that when you fix the game, when you take apart the uh, the parts of the game that are very focused on money, that are focused on capitalism, and that are focused on not just fun, then that's whenever you get people buying the game. So will I be getting this game at some point down the line? Probably in a humble bundle whenever it's like $4 because I'm not a huge Lord of the Rings dude to begin with. Um, obviously, you know, if you've been in my chat for a while, if you've been in my content 
spear for a while. Sphere, perhaps, not spear. That's a, that's a weapon. Then you'll know that I'm not really your movie guy. I'm not a connoisseur of the films. I'm more of a video games man myself. And so, you know, I've never really been super into the series, but... Uh, I respect what it is. I respect the uh, the tenure of Lord of the Rings, and I respect Shadow of War, and I respect it even more now because Monolith removed the uh, the really money focused side of the game, and they are continuing to improve the game overall. So uh, I think that right now we're kind of coming out of this slump that's focused on making money as compared to just having fun and making a game that's enjoyable for people. And um, it's a slump that we've been in for the past couple of years as DLC kind of began to rise and as DLC packs specifically uh, began to rise in popularity and eventually that transferred over into microtransactions and loot boxes and things along those lines. But I think we're starting to kind of come out of that because people are getting sick of it and they're making their voices heard and the sales obviously, for Shadow of War were not great. Whenever the game came out, there was controversy around one of the developers who had died, and there was, like, this in-game, uh, you know, uh, character that you could purchase for microtransactions, but they thought it was going to be a free update, and it was kind of weird, um... But it left a really bad taste in pretty much everyone's mouths. And so, you know, with that, they kind of stepped back and they took that out completely. And so now they're changing it to where people actually are enjoying, you know, what they're bringing to the table now. Uh, but Decky says the boring campaign criticism worries me. It's not the boring campaign. There's one portion of the game that's incredibly slow. Uh, it's kind of like whenever you're playing a way out and you get to the boat scene. Whenever you are going down this giant raft, no spoilers or anything like that. Uh, but that really did put a damper on the entire situation, if I had to say so myself. Um, but with that being said, there will also be gear system upgrades and progression updates. So for those that want to jump in to Shadow of War and see what the fuss is all about, then by all means, we can go ahead and say that this is the perfect opportunity to do that. Now, um, how much is it right now, anyways? Let's just let's just do a little bit of do a little bit of background research. Uh, let's see what we've got. Uh, it is, wow, okay, that's still $50. That's not what I thought at all. How about that? Okay, well, that changes my tone a, a little bit. That's a bit pricey. I would wait until it's at least 30 or, or 25 I thought it was going to be at least half off by now. Uh, the boat scene was the best bit in a way out. I don't know about that. Rasm says, seriously, the Middle-Earth games are probably some of the more interesting Lord of the Rings games. Yes, 100%. I enjoyed Shadow of Mordor. Uh, I thought that... Um, it is Shadow of Mordor, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I enjoyed that, but it's not something I would go back and really dive into and like become fully invested in. Uh, though, I understand that there are a ton of people out there that really are passionate about what those games do bring to the table, and so I can respect it. You know, I respect it big time. And uh, if you are one of those people, then by all means, dive back into it. I think that it is definitely going to be worth the wait. Um... You know, whenever it is not $50, that's a bit much. Um, moving along to our final story of the day, uh, coming to us from Game Rant. Destiny 2 second DLC releases May 8th, question mark, In, insert question here, not sure of the news. Uh, Janine Engelbrecht is writing over here at Game Rant. Speculations surrounding the Destiny 2 DLC release date continue after Bungie's website in French hints at the new in France would be a better way to say that, I think. I don't know. The French Bungie website uh, at new content for the game coming May 8th of this year. The title for the next DLC is further speculated to be Destiny 2 expansion to the Fallen Warmind after retailers Amazon and GameStop listed it on their websites not too long ago, uh, but was soon pulled and everyone nevertheless dismissed it as a fake. Uh, YouTuber Mesa Sean, however, found evidence that the release date for the Destiny 2 DLC may indeed be May 8th, and he explains how he came to the conclusion in the first minute of his YouTube video, which we are not going to watch. Apparently, the YouTube was sent a tweet, or the YouTuber was sent a tweet by Danny V on Twitter that said that in the French version of This Week at Bungie, it says that the next game update will be on May 8th. In the English version of This Week at Bungie, though, it does not say the same thing as the French site, but uh, through Google Translate, the French version of This Week of Bungie says the following, We are far from having reached the final version. Many challenges, or cha changes, excuse me, are planned for Destiny 2. This is just another step. Yes, we will look at that link. Uh, the next is scheduled for May the 8th. From this message, we can assume that it is either the next Destiny 2 update, 1.1.4, uh, that will be implemented on May the 8th, or it is, in fact, the release date of the second Destiny 2 DLC. What we do know about the next Destiny 2 DLC is that it will not be delayed on PC, and that it may take place on Saturn. Additionally, some details... Okay, there's a lot There's a lot going on here. There's Destiny 2's out on PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Also, where'd my music go? It got real quiet. It got real quiet. Hello? Hello? I need my lo-fi hip-hop beats, please. I need my lo-fi hip-hop beats. I'm having withdrawals. Hello? 
Hey guys, it's me, Sam Adams, having some uh, having some silence right now, and I'm not sure what to do with it. Anyways, we're gonna we're gonna go to to you know we're just gonna do the the full the full live and unadulterated just going in because I need some music, man. I need some music. Hello, beautiful. There's an ad. Well, how about that? It's also the home phone that's a home security Get a home phone. Available window, it's great. Door, yeah. And motion sensors. Oh, wow. It even has Man, you can't skip this thing. This. Oh, wow. It's great. Oh, yeah. Get an Uma mobile app. From your home number, that's what we call my dog occasionally. We call her Uma. I'm not going to buy that. Uma. Appreciate it. For your home. Yeah, that's great. Beautiful. That's what I want. Okay, fantastic. Back to the news. Back to the news. Uh, yes, Destiny 2 is out right now on the uh, PS4, Xbox One, and PC. And if you want to check out the second DLC, uh, there are going to be a lot of changes coming on down the line that I think are going to benefit the game in the long run. I think are going to be a very major factor in the game's success because obviously... Is that god-awful sound? Um... strange breathing noises um but yes as the game does continue to evolve and change i think that the expansions are going to be a major part of the success i think that we are going to be seeing a lot of changes come into the game that are going to try and bring back an audience that is not there anymore and it will be very interesting to see how much passion goes in to the uh, that goes into the uh to the game itself and um it'll be really cool to see if bungie can pull off an entire comeback what is this god oh god is that Okay, that is all right. Um, I, I can't tell if there's like really bad music or if there's something going on outside. Best podcast ever, by the way. Just best podcast, hands down. Also, my nose is running and it's hot and it's sweaty. Best episode ever. Um, so we'll see what happens with this. The Fallen Warmind, May 8th, maybe. I don't know if it's going to be Expansion 2. It seems like it could be the right time for that to come out, uh, but a regular update could also happen it's also very plausible we'll have to see what happens but um but yeah as far as the uma uh as far as the uma home phone alarm system that the uh that the ad was showing maybe it's good maybe it's not we'll do a full ad review later on but i did want to follow up with one more link uh ooh, bbc.com slash news slash world uh, Asia, uh, let's see, wow, it's a lot of numbers, four, three, six, two, four, six, three, two, that's an eight, oh god, um, four, three, <laughs> four, six, two, four, six, three, two. Yeah, okay, cool, uh, Malaysian Roast Master Chef, I'll say, I, I said Master Chief last night on stream, over Chicken Ring Dang Elimination, I probably said that Absolutely terribly. Uh, judges John Tarot and Greg Wallace said Bristol-based Zelina Curry. Ooh, wow. Chicken rendang needed crispy skin. It was served as an accompaniment to nasi lemak, a beloved b beloved Malaysian dish. Beloved, I do. Mm, man, there are a lot of words here. I don't know. Uh, like beloved, apparently. Uh, Malaysians have been flocking to social media fury to point out the judges simply got chicken rendang all wrong. I like the rendang flavor. There's a coconut sweetness. However, the chicken skin isn't crispy. It can't be eaten, and all the sauce is on the skin, so I can't eat it. What do you mean you can't eat it? If you if you literally if if, it, if it's chicken and it has sauce on it, where's the issue? I don't care what ethnicity the chicken is supposed to be, or what 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 part of the world it's supposed to be representing. If you have chicken with sauce on it, then that's a win. There's no, okay. Uh, utter ridiculousness wrote Sajita Surian. I think I nailed that. In response to a Facebook post about the story, crispy chicken rendang, did the judges think it was this uh, fish and chips? Calling themselves celebrity chefs when they only know about food from their own culture. Such limited knowledge of cuisine from around the world. Shame on them, really. Well, I mean, I have no idea what the hell it is. But scroll down, even our prime minister took a shot at them. Wow. Wow. What is this? This is chicken rendang, not KFC. So it all boils down to how the chef controls the spices and the flames. The amount of coconut milk is also key. Um, This sounds delicious. Uh, That is great looking i'm just gonna say and also this man has quite the wow all right he yeah um looks pretty good though man audio listeners have been just loving it this episode uh but with that being said malaysians i apologize on behalf of the master chef uh people for roasting your no no pun intended for roasting your chicken but uh you know i'm not a connoisseur of this kind of thing but 
Uh, with that being said, I hope you guys are going to have a fantastic day. Thank you for joining me for this incredibly strange episode of Caffeinate. I've got to get my audio stuff fixed. Uh, we are going to be working on that over the next couple of days as things begin to kind of shift around and do things. Uh, but I'm going to be taking off this shirt very shortly because it's very hot. I have a couple of things to do uh, here and there, so I won't be doing a post-Caffeinate stream. But for those that are listening on podcast services, if you have made it this far, my God, what's wrong with you? Man, you must be really bored, or you're just at the gym and you don't want to change what's going on uh, with your podcast earbuds. Um, alternatively, you could be really into Chicken Rain Dang and somebody that is having trouble with audio. Maybe. That could be a thing. Who knows? Uh, but if you are listening on Anchor, drop a favorite. If you are dropping on, uh, if you're listening on Anchor, you can do some applause or whatever you want to do over there. If you are on podcast services, leave a rating. If you're on, well, actually, no, probably not. This is a really bad one to leave a rating on. Go back to yesterday's episode. It was a good one. Uh, YouTube, you can subscribe over there. All that good stuff. You know where to find it. You know where to find it. Uh, but good luck to the chicken people. I hope they get all of that sorted out. I will talk to you guys very soon. I'll be back tonight for a stream uh, with hopefully better audio. And until then, you guys have a fantastic day. I will talk to you very soon and peace.